What's up, girly girl? What you doing, huh? What are you doing? Hey there, everybody. This is Gary from Constricted and Addicted. I've got Maggie here. And today we're going to talk about reptiles and education. Stick around. I've seen a lot about uh, people wanting to get involved in doing education with reptiles. I have been asked, how do you get involved? What's the first starting point in doing so? So I figured it was a good idea to maybe make a video about my journey into what I do with educated education and educating the public with my reptiles. Uh, today we've got Maggie. Maggie is my, she's a platinum tiger from Jeremy Wilcox. This girl was rescued. Jeremy brought her back to complete health and then sent her to me to live for the rest of her life. And this girl right here is absolutely one of the most docile retics I have ever seen. I mean, even with feeding responses, this girl really doesn't have a feeding response until she's got food in front of her. So, she is the perfect animal for me to talk about my journey with education and being able to go into the public and take retics, take sulcata tortoises, be able to take uh, reptiles that some people may never ever get to experience in their life and show them what beautiful creatures they are. The first thing that I did, <laughs> the first thing, she's trying to work her way through my hair. The first thing that I did was my granddaughter asked me to bring a couple of snakes into her school probably like four or five years ago. I don't, I, it, was, it was a while back. And in doing so, there was, a, there was a parent or a teacher there, I really don't remember, and she was a board member for one of the children's fairs out here in the county that I live in. Now where I live is a fairly small county. The county population of the two counties is probably like less than 40,000 people. So Calaveras County had contacted me and asked me if I was willing to bring some snakes in and they were gonna provide me with a booth. It wasn't gonna cost me anything to do it. And I thought, I really didn't have any experience other than what I had done with the children in that school. And, and I started to do some research. I started to look online and I really thought about what am I going to bring to this, to this event here that is gonna be you know, worth the children being excited, worth me being excited, and maybe in the end, educate somebody about uh, reptiles in general. I, at that point in time, uh, Emma was probably about nine or 10 feet long, and we brought Emma, we brought a couple of sulcata tortoises, I brought my Slayer reticulated python. I think I brought a slew of snakes, and I really learned something from that first experience. And the first thing was, is that when you bring reptiles to any sort of event, you are going to be the main attraction. Whether you have people coming by and wanting to take pictures with your animal, whether they want to talk to you about reptiles, they're fascinated by it, or they're simply scared. But what they'll do is they'll come by and, and they will just be fascinated that someone like you or me or maybe their child is handling this animal without any fear. Uh, then they start to walk through their own fears. But what I learned from that first experience was is that you've really got to tailor the reptile to what you're doing. Uh, bringing a large reticulated python to a children's event, in my opinion, is probably not the smartest thing to do because most of these kids, they want to handle the snake. They want to touch the snake. And Emma's a perfect example and, and, and a perfect reticulated python for that. 
but most of these children have never held a snake before, so they don't know what to do. Even if you're coaching them, they don't know what to do. So I have found that whenever I go to the children's shows, I take a couple of smaller retics and I take Emma. And Emma is really just for show only, only because again, she's a very large animal and I do not want anything to happen. Uh, and it usually comes with ex inexperience of somebody handling the animal and that's when something happens. But if I hand this animal over to a child, chances are they're gonna have a good time. They're gonna have a good experience. They're gonna be able to listen a little better because this animal right here is way more manageable uh, than a, you know, a 12, 13 foot reticulated python. I brought the tortoises with me and the tortoises were a big hit because the kids could get down there and we, we always bring like cactus or we bring some, some alfalfa or something for them to feed the tortoise. That really engages the children with the animals. It gets them some fascination points and some wows and they're just really like enthralled that they get to sit there and feed a reptile. Now, don't bring any food to feed these guys. That's not a suggested thing. Um, but what I have found is that the smaller the children, the smaller the snakes. I've also learned that it's, it's me. I want, I want to have a big snake there. I want to have that wow factor from all the kids going, oh my gosh. And after doing a few shows, uh, what I've learned is, is that they get just as much wow factor out of the smaller snakes as they do the bigger snakes. So Tailor your, your show, your animals, tailor them to the children that, you're, that you are catering to. The experience for everybody is going to be better if you do that. So in my experience with going into schools first and then being asked to do a county fair, we got to do a lot of interactions with people at, at uh, the county fairs. Now we do two county fairs. Our, we have two counties that are very close to each other, the Amador County uh, Fair and the Calaveras County Fair, both have children's fairs and they've already booked me for, for this year, which is really nice. Last year when we went and did it, it was amazing outside. The weather was beautiful. It was like 80 degrees. It was perfect for the snakes. One thing to always remember is when you are doing a show, whether it's in April or August or December, make sure that the animals are properly taken care of. Meaning that find out if you get asked to do a show, find out where they're going to put you. Ask them if there's a place to plug in thermostats and heaters so that you can keep the animals warm. They're cold blooded animals. It might feel warm in a building, but to them, it's not gonna feel very warm. So we've gotta make sure that we're protecting our animals at the same time we're educating people with them. Now, when I was doing the fairs, what would happen is, is you get a lot of interaction. Uh, I personally had interaction with Fish and Game. Uh, I got to do a little you know, nonchalant presentation with those guys. They had never held or seen a reticulated python. And they got to hold Emma and they were just blown away how soft and how beautiful and how gentle she was. Uh, and they had also heard, this was right after the incident with the FWC had taken place. So they had heard of that incident, but they had never been exposed to the reptiles that we had brought. So the interaction with the public can range from law and county officials right down to school teachers and then like right down to Girl Scouts, right? Because that's what we did a couple of weekends ago. We had the Girl Scouts come up to our booth at the Amador County Fair and the, the animals impressed one of the children so much. I believe the term she uses, she had been bugging her since that fair to somehow get an event so we could bring the snakes back. And they did a, an axolotl themed uh, Girl Scout event uh, in Amador County and they invited us to come in and bring the snakes again or bring the reptiles, not just the snakes, but bring the reptiles. Uh, and it was just an amazing thing. One of the things that took place at that event was the girl's mom who had invited us to come out and be part of this event was deathly afraid of snakes. 
she had an incident take place with a ball python in kindergarten where they lined all the kids up in a circle and I guess the, the classroom had a pet python, a pet ball python. They actually made everybody sit in that circle while that snake crawled on everybody. And she said it terrified her and she's had a dislike for reptiles since. Her daughter, on the other hand, has loved reptiles her whole life. So the interaction with my reptiles and her daughter allowed her to see that they weren't these scary creatures that she was introduced to as a child. At the end of the day, she was touching the Burmese python, Gigi, my, my Burmese, and then she held her. She walked through her fear and she was so grateful that we gave her that opportunity. Now, I am the one who's extremely grateful because we were given that opportunity to allow that experience to happen. So uh, the last thing, exposure, like it's, it, it, exposure is what allows us to get out there and to, to interact with the public. If we're having positive interactions with the public, chances are that we're gonna be able to continue to give those interactions to people because one thing I don't do is I don't make people hold the animals. I don't, even, I don't even interact with anybody unless they come up to me. And once they come up to me, then they've started to engage and that starts everything. Once I start engaging with somebody, usually at a fair or something, you've got a lot of people who are gonna stand around, they're gonna stop, they're gonna listen, they're gonna look, they're gonna get amazed and they're gonna get uh, an interaction, whether it's physical or visual with a reptile that they probably would never have anywhere else. So in that, I'm gonna close with this, uh, insurance. Now this is something that I just today started looking into. And what do you do when you've got reptiles and you're interacting with the public? Uh, I know that these animals are puppy dog tame, right? But you always have to be prepared for the worst that can happen. So I actually started looking into uh, exotic pet insurance and it's not for homeowner's insurance it's for if I take my animals to a show and something happens let's just say my animal bites a kid you know first of all I want to make sure that the child is taken care of or the person whatever happens that they are taken care of but I also want to make sure that I'm taken care of I want to make sure that my pets are protected I want to make sure that all parties involved are protected so I've never been asked for if I have insurance if I carry insurance uh, but you know what? It's a, it's a question that I've had for myself. And I think that moving forward, if I want to continue to educate the public face to face physically with these reptiles, that it's probably a good idea that I have something in place. Uh, and so as I get more information about it, I will definitely feed it to you guys and let you know uh, what I came up with. They called me back tonight and it sounded like it's not going to be a cheap thing. So I don't know if it's because I mentioned the size of Emma uh, or the amount of reticulated pythons that I have, but she was, I was kind of getting this vibe that it's going to be more than car insurance. So like I said, we'll find out. Uh, I actually did go through my homeowner's insurance. They are the ones who found an underwriter that said that they can do this. So, uh, I went to the internet, I went everywhere, and I could not find an insurance company that covered animals in the manner that I am looking for. And when I was able to speak to somebody and talk to them about it and tell them what I was doing, they actually were able to find an underwriter. Uh, they're preparing a quote for me. So I don't know what this is gonna cost. <laughs> Anyways, guys, we'll keep it coming. I appreciate everybody that subscribed to the channel. You guys are awesome. You know, uh, I, I'm going to do more. I'm going to put some more content up. Let's get some more uh, subscriptions on here. Let's get some more likes on here. Let's get this video into the hands of people uh, who need to see this, right? There's a lot of people who've been asking me questions about education. What do I do? And, and I don't have the, like, the, 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 the most uh, elaborate answer on what to do and, and how to be an educator, uh, but it starts somewhere. And if you can get into your schools 
and maybe do a presentation with a school, talk to uh, a daycare, where what you want is exposure. And once you get the exposure, then you're gonna be able to get into the next realm and into the next realm, whatever that might be. For me, it was going from the schools and then I got asked to do a county fair. So, and now the public really does know me as the snake guy. They, they know that if they need a reptile or if they uh, wanna learn something about uh, reptiles, that they can get a hold of me and I can be there. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll talk to you soon, thanks.